How you doing folks? I'm Mike and you're watching the Michigan Woodsman. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so this video is just going to be uh, uh, just, a, just a talk, just a short talk about uh, things to think about at the beginning of the ice season and uh, maybe some things to think about every time before you go out. Uh, just kind of a checklist going over gear, make sure you have what you need um, and also maybe some, some safety tips. So uh, stick around guys. covered in this series was the uh, you know the initial get the getting the gear out rounding everything up getting it all into one location so you can look at it um, and getting the shanty set up checking out the shanty uh, for me that's number one um, this this is this is the first year I've had to put it back together last year was my first year using this particular shanty um, it's the first time I've had one I used to just rough it and drag the sled and and do that. There, there's still a place for that now, but um, I did upgrade and uh, this is the, so last year at the end of the season I took the cover off of this, off of this, rolled it up and took it inside, stored it inside. Um, so no, no squirrels, no mice made a home, you know, chew this thing up. It's a pretty big investment so you want to, you want to take care of it, make it last, get as much use out of it as you can. Uh, so at the end of the season, I took this off. So the first video, you just showed me pulling it out, setting it up, and one of the first things you want to do is check the shanty, look around, go over everything, make sure everything works right, make sure there's no damage. Um, the last thing you want to do is get out there, get out there on the ice. Maybe you're a long ways from home. This or that, you get out there, go to flip up your shanty. Nothing worse than having, you know, 40 holes in it. Uh, that happened to me before. Um, my friend Pat and I, we went up to, uh, up north, up into the UP, um, to Big Lake Manistique and Curtis to go ice fishing. And we threw all the stuff together at the last second, get up there, and uh, we get out on the ice, we go, to, and it's windy, I mean, it's windy. We go to flip the shanty open, and it was a shanty that a friend of his gave him, and he had it stored throughout the summer season in his garage. We flipped that thing open and there must have been 40, 50, 60 holes in that thing. I mean, it was, it was bad. We made do with what we had, but uh, after that, I decided that's worth checking. <laughs> so don't, whatever you do, don't just throw your gear in a truck, head up there and then start pulling it out. You know, you need to get it out, get home, get the stuff out, go over it, look it through, make sure you've got everything you need. And for me, number one is checking the, checking the shanty, making sure the shanty's good. And, uh, and then from that, uh, another important thing is batteries. Now this shanty's got a light, a built-in LED light, so you know, you got a battery pack or a battery over here. You want to make sure that's fully charged. Um, I use electronics, so you're going to want to make sure that's charged. Uh, my battery auger, um, zero maintenance, but you want to make sure the battery is charged, but have a backup battery. You want to have backup batteries. It's important. I mean, nothing worse than getting out there and having a battery die on something that you need. I mean, obviously, all this fancy gear is not necessary to do ice fishing. It just depends on what you're doing, where you're at. Uh, but it, it certainly, it certainly helps. And for me, this is what I have and this is what I use. So these are the things that that I think about. But one, check the shanty. Make sure everything's in good working order and it's good to go. Uh, number two, check your batteries, make sure not all the batteries are charged, and then you also have backup batteries uh, just in case. Um, what else is there? Um, bait bucket, make sure your bait bucket, the batteries in the aerator are good to go, make sure there's nothing wrong with the bait buckets. Um, your electronics, turn them on, make sure they're, they're working, uh, make sure you don't have any issues there. Um, your your tip-ups. I mean, you're going to want to check your tip-ups. Um, you know, do this, do that. You're going to want to replace. I don't know. You don't have to replace. Like I use black nylon uh, line for the spool on my tip-ups, and I just put a long fluorocarbon or uh, 
yeah, fluorocarbon leader on it. And, uh, and that's good, but each year I kind of have a little OCD, so that nylon would last a few years. It, it would be fine. It would hold up as long as it thoroughly dried out. Um, but for me, I just, it's cheap enough. I replace it every year. Uh, I re-spool it. I, I tie new leaders on. I make sure it's all good to go and fresh. Nothing's dry, rotted, or brittle, because the last thing you want to do is lose a fish because you were lazy and or this or that. So. Uh, that's another thing. Make sure your tip ups. Make sure your tip ups are good to go in working order. Um, the uh, what else would there be? Rods, reels. Make sure that those things are good to go. I respool mine every year. Um, I check. You know, make sure you have plenty of hooks. Make sure you have extra line with you. Um, propane. The little your you know your little bottles of propane. Like I refill mine so. I make sure that I have a bunch of, you know, a bunch of propane uh, with me. I bring a little cook and grill with me a lot of times, so I make sure that that's with me. Um, the other thing is the heater. Uh, I have a little buddy heater. Um, you know, you got to make sure that's working. There's something in the line right now. I have to fix it. I bought a part for it and then lost it. But that's another thing. You want to make sure your your heater works. You want to make sure you have fuel for that. You want to make sure you have fuel for the stove. Um, if you have flashlight headlamps, make sure that you have those. And you're going to want headlamps, by the way, because your fingers are going to be cold. You know, you're pulling, running tip ups, pulling tip ups, doing this, doing that. You're not going to want. You're not going to be able to hold a flashlight. You'll end up doing a lot of people do it, drop it down the hole. So make sure you got a headlamp. Make sure you got batteries for it, backup batteries. Um, make sure. Uh, let's see, rods, reels. Uh, make sure you have all your. Make sure you have all your. Um, your tackle, you know, go through your tackle, make, make sure you have what you need, make sure you didn't use too much of something or lose too many of this or that, you know, and then find out the hard way when you get up there. Um, so make sure you've got, make sure you've got all the lures, everything that you want, all the tackle, everything that goes with it. Um, tip ups, I always bring them little driveway reflector because when you're out there sometimes you will lose, sometimes visually you will lose your tip ups when you look out. It's hard to see them, especially if it's windy, blowy, snow's covering them. You don't want other idiots out there on their snowmobiles running them over, which I've seen before. So I use the, you know, I take a drill out there with me for anchoring down. That's another thing. I make sure I have the bit and the screw anchors to, if it's really windy, to screw down into the ice, hook some paracord up to it, strap it down. And uh, so that's another thing, you know, bring a drill with you. Put a drill bit in there big enough to drill a hole and drop one of them driveway reflectors uh, by all your tip ups. So it makes it easier for you to spot them when you're shining uh, for them to check the flags. And then also, I use those blinky lights on my flags so when they tip up, you know, I can see them. They'll start blinking red and get your attention. But you're going to want to make sure that those batteries are good to go, that they're working as well. I mean, all these things make for a smoother trip. You know, you want to get the most out of your time. So, um, what else? We've got, uh, oh, footwear. Um, I usually just use these rubber muck boots, but uh, I have these things now, and I, would, I suffer for a couple seasons without them. I'm glad I finally got them, but them uh, yak track type, uh, type chain things that you, that you slide on the bottom of your boots. So sometimes the ice is so bad that you can't barely stand up or move across them. When you're running and checking, when you're running and checking tip ups, you need to have traction. So that's an important thing to think about. Make sure you got that in there. Um, so what else? We've got batteries. Uh, oh, GPSs, phones, those kind of things. So um, another thing to think about is safety. Now, I already mentioned the batteries and all that, but that's really important. Uh, if you're going out on a local lake that you know really well, you're just walking right off the shore, right out there, you know, not a big deal. But my, my buddy Pat and I, we went up north. We shared his sled because I didn't have a sled then. And uh, we went up on Big Lake Manistee. We're out there in the middle of this thing. We had a visual. We knew where we were, where the truck should be based off of there's a little island. We weren't too far off the island. So we knew visually where my truck should be. And it, it, it stormed that night. We were out pretty late. And we were just nailing walleye. And we didn't want to stop. So uh, we stuck it out out there for a ways and for a while. And when we decided to pull up, it was, it was, it was a whiteout. You could not see in front of it any further than the headlights. I mean, not nearly as far as the headlights would normally reach. I mean, it was, it was bad. You could throw a baseball further than you could actually see. And uh, so we got everything loaded up and 
what happened was we both had cell phones and at the end of the, when we got done fishing, we laid out all our fish and we were pretty proud of it so we're taking pictures and, and doing this and that and my phone died. And I said, oh crap, my phone died. And Pat said, oh you're kidding. He said, and I said, no. He says, well, mine's been dead for a while. And I said, oh, well, that ain't good. You know, it's, it's pretty crummy out. And uh, well, he had a GPS, uh, like a graph type GPS deal, a handheld unit. So we checked that thing and that thing had died. It was really cold out, you know, so hard on the batteries. But, uh, and then I had a Garmin. I had a handheld GPS here. I thought I was pretty, pretty prepared. I mean, I thought about the stuff before I went out, but I was uh, pretty careless that, you know, hindsight looking back on it, I was pretty careless because we were in a, we ended up in a pretty tight situation. So all of our electronics were dead and, you know, we had a lake map but and we tried to orient where we were so we had a physical map of where we were where we were parked and this and that and even after all that i mean we were almost through so we got on the sled and started going back uh, the best direction as we knew and we hit shore and we decided to make a right and uh, you know had we had a compass and all that we could have purposely aimed off till we hit shore and then started returning back in the direction we were supposed to be and we, we would have probably been better off if we would have planned that, but that's one of those things, you know, that's why I'm telling you this. Um, so what, what ended up happening was we hit the shore and we went this direction and we drove right past. The storm was so bad that, that even though our truck was only about 75, 100 feet off the, off the shore in, the, in a cul-de-sac type deal, a little boat launch deal, it was so covered in snow out there that we could not tell. I mean, you couldn't see any tracks, nothing. It was just white out you couldn't tell so long story short we went all the way down the shore this way as far as until we realized there's just no way it's this far off so we headed back the other direction and uh, we started following that shore for a long time and we finally it was getting to be pretty serious because it was frigid it was a blizzard wind was bad and all of our communication was gone so we ended up finding one place that had a light on it when we pulled up it was just a bunch of guys up at their north up at their cabin up north they were all playing cards up you know they were up having a good time and so they seen our lights out there we kind of pulled up onto the pulled up to their beach and the guys could tell that we were stopping so they kind of come up to the door waved us in and we went up there and told them our predicament and they pulled out their map a GPS told us where we were we told where we were parked they showed us how to get there but long story short um, we had, the, we had the road name mixed up, so we ended up having to come back to their place, tell them, listen, you know, that that wasn't the boat launch that you sent us to. And they said, well, hey, follow us. So lucky for us, these guys let us follow them on the sled, and they had their GPS. They took us right to where my truck was, and once I hit the clicker and it, you know, it lit up, you still couldn't see it till you were right on top of it. But long story short, something that stupid here, we had four different electronics, we had backup batteries for certain things, all this, and we still ended up in a really bad spot. It could have, it could have turned bad, um, but we were fortunate enough to find those guys and they helped us out. And they also told us that if we would have went another couple hundred foot past their house, or about 500 foot past their house, um, that that was the inlet or outlet, and uh, that it was open water essentially. So, and they said people do it every year, fall in. So. Um, just a, just a tip, something to think about. Um, I used to think about it, but not that hard. Uh, but after going through that, uh, for now on, that's why I say I go through every bit of my stuff. I make sure I, I have everything I need. I have a physical map, I have a compass. Um, I'll figure out what my bearing is when we set up to where the truck is, just to make sure that I know. Um, I make sure I have backup batteries for the Garmin, make sure I have backup batteries for the um, GPS. Uh, for the fish finder, all that. It's just, uh, you can't, um, the redundancy in this situation is a good thing. You can't go overboard on, on that and being safe. Um, but uh, what else? Uh, hand warmers. Uh, we bring, I keep hand warmers in here. Uh, you know, you're going to want to bring some snacks, that kind of thing. All right, the only other thing, like I mentioned, I have a battery auger. Uh, a lot of guys use gas augers, and that's fine, but you want to make sure you bring along extra fuel, extra plug, you know, a couple tools to maintenance your stuff, um, and then make sure you check it, you know, confirm that it works before you go out. You don't want to spoil a trip, get out there and find out your auger don't work, 
or you know or this or that so um, I think I've covered this wasn't you know this wasn't all planned out or written down this, this video by any means on what I wanted to cover but I think I think I, I think I covered everything that I usually go over make sure the shanty's good make sure the auger's good make sure you've got backup batteries for everything make sure your electronics work um, make sure you have you know the the yak tracks or chains for your feet so you can uh, take care of that. Make sure you got headlamps, flashlights, uh, make sure your tip ups are good, Re you know, re-spool them, make sure your rods and reels are good to go and work and re-spool those. Make sure you have the hooks, lures, tackle, you know, the basic stuff that you need. Um, and the, you just make sure that you have all that stuff. Um, yeah, so I think I think that covers it. Now when I go out when I do take this unit, when I do take this whole unit, I still take that smaller jet sled and throw it in the back of my sled up on that rack because what I like to do when we get set up and we're setting up tip-ups, uh, when we got to go check those tip-ups, you know, I don't, I don't want to have to try to lug a bunch of things to the tip-up to, to check it, take care of it. I'll take the little, the small jet sled and I'll throw, you know, a smaller minnow bucket in it, throw some minnows in there, throw some of my, uh, you know, my snips, my, uh, um, just, just all the tackle I need. So if something went wrong, like I do, I pre-build my leaders and this and that for the tip up. So, um, I'll bring that along. So if, if one rips off for this or that, I can tie another one on real quick, set it and I'm good to go. Uh, when I do go out and check tip ups, a lot of times I'll use my, uh, I'll, I'll drop my transducer in there to set the depth right. So I might throw, I might throw my electronic in the jet sled. So I'll throw the handful of things that I need into the sled so there's not, not a bunch of back, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I'll pull that thing out there and boom, 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 check. I'll throw a shovel in there with it. That's another thing. Make sure you take a snow shovel. There's nothing worse than getting out there and forgetting you don't have a snow shovel and having to move all the snow for this whole thing with your feet. Uh, done that before. So bring a shovel. But you throw the shovel on there, go, you know, you check them mound the snow up, move it around, do what you got to do, check your tip-ups, pull it back to the shanty, throw your electronics and that back into the shanty and get back to fishing. But, um, just some things to think about, guys. Obviously, this is not an in-depth uh, in uh, video by any means, uh, but these are the things that I think about before I go out, so I figured I'd share them with you. All right, guys, well, this concludes uh, part two in the ice fishing series. I appreciate you you coming and giving me a few minutes of your time and watching this. Um, if you liked what you were watching, hit like, hit subscribe, and, and all that stuff. Um, I think on the next one we'll go over my bait buckets and the different, uh, you know, the pros and cons of the different ones that I have. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for your support. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Until then, you know, get out in the woods, get out there, and enjoy God's creation. Stay safe while you're doing it.